Hi to all, and uh, welcome to this series of interviews for Open Conference. I'm Pantelis Vikatos, a member of the Technical Committee and Senior Director of uh, Research at Orpheum. And uh, I'm glad to have with me Georgia Maniati, who will uh, join with a um, talk to the conference. So Georgia Maniati is a um, speech and language research scientist working in the language technologies industry. So welcome, Georgia. Hi, Padelis. Hi to all. I'm very glad to be here with you. Thanks for having me. So you specialize in uh, machine learning um, to model the human speech. Can you tell us about your journey, journey in AI and data science? Sure. So I am a speech scientist uh, at Samsung Electronics at Inertix department. Uh, and I'm glad to share my story because uh, it's a bit unusual, I would say. Um, I am a speech scientist because um, the machine learning domain I am uh, working on uh, is on speech and language data. So we model um, human speech. Um, in specific, we do text to speech. We are um, trying to solve the problem of how to convert written text to a, a voice. So basically giving machines a voice. Uh, my personal story is a bit diverse because I started uh, as a linguist. Uh, my studies were in linguistics in Athens. And then I decided that I wanted to uh, deepen my knowledge in what was very prominent at the time, uh, machine learning for language in 2015. So I continued my studies in Edinburgh. I did a master's of science in speech and language processing. It was a degree that combined artificial intelligence, uh, linguistics, and machine learning. Um, and I was supported to do that master's by an ASIS foundation. Um, after that, I got immediately hired in the language technologies industry. Firstly, abroad, I worked for um, a year as a language engineer in Italy, and then I came back to Greece, uh, working with um, the text-to-speech team at the United Samsung. Very interesting uh, uh, story, and um, so uh, this year you are a part of the Open Conference as a speaker. What are your thoughts about uh, this uh, participation? I'm very enthusiastic and I'm looking forward to it. It will be one of my first experiences uh, where I'm speaking to a larger audience, um, an audience that is not speech uh, scientist only. So I know it will be a technical audience, but it will be uh, a form of uh, uh, speaking about AI literacy. Um, and I'm, I'm very glad to share my thoughts and my insights to people that come from different backgrounds. Also, I look forward to meeting the participants in the conference and the rest of the speakers and uh, participating workshops. Yeah, I'm sure it will be great. Sure. And uh, what about this um, presentation? Can you give us uh, a short insight of the topic? Uh, what you will present in open? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I will argue that um, our AI models are only as good as our data. Um, this is very closely related to my background as I started off as a linguist and the speech and language data uh, is the field that I'm most interested in. Uh, but first, in order to argue this, I will do a brief introduction into AI concepts. So it will be uh, some kind of um, AI literacy and um, a yeah, small cutting through the hype for everyone uh, on what AI is and isn't. And then I will get into more detail on why uh, data has a crucial role uh, for the machine learning paradigm and how good or bad data uh, will affect um, any application that uh, is developed and uh, affects people's lives. So I think it will be an interesting talk for everyone, given the, the, the current hype. You mentioned about the role of data, and uh, one topic of discussion is about the, the respons responsible AI, which is mm -hmm. an approach to develop and uh, deploy AI 
uh, in terms of ethical and uh, legal uh, points. Uh, what are the main principles um, that should be followed? Sure. Um, so yeah, let, let me first start with an example. So um, I argue that our AI, AI models can be as smart as our data. And that is because um, it is very easy for us to introduce bias in our data when we uh, try to um, train AI models. So if this, bi this bias can be not harmful, can be harmless, if our task is a very simple task, for example, if we're trying to train a system in order to recognize or classify images of apples versus oranges, um, and we only show images of red apples, then when, when time comes to test the system and we have a green apple, the system will most probably confuse it uh, for an orange. And that means that our data was not broad enough and was not representative enough of the category that we wanted to show. So this would be a harmless example, but if our application has an impact of, on human lives, so for example, if we train the system to recognize um, images of um, skin to maybe predict uh, cancer in, uh, in skin, that would be crucial to have representative training images from populations of all around the, all around the globe and not um, introduce bias um, over uh, one population. Uh, so to wrap this example up, in order to have responsible AI, we, have, we need to be um, human-centric. So we need to be at any point aware um, of the population that we're going to address and be sure to uh, include examples in training data of all the population that the application will be used for, um, that is inclusive AI. Um, this will also create the fair um, application because it will uh, not have a different um, behavior uh, depending on one's origin. Uh, so other examples, other principles that would govern responsible AI would be uh, privacy. So we need to make sure that at runtime uh, the user will not um, give data that they have not consented to give. Uh, and of course, secure, um, transparent AI. So the data that we have collected for training these models must be um, transparent the way that we have acquired this data. So um, not by collecting them without consent again. So these are the most important principles for developing responsible AI, I would say, yeah. And I guess that uh, the introduction of um, humans, annotators, and human in the loop in general, it's crucial in these um, methodologies and in order sure. to guarantee this responsibility. Um, mm -hmm. So last question, can you describe, because uh, it is very challenging, this uh, issue, your your daily challenges of training your own AI models? Yeah, um, so I would mainly categorize the challenges into two categories. So uh, data challenges and evaluation challenges. So as I will also give more details in my, my speech, um, the, the problem that I am trying to solve and the field I'm working in is trying to solve is uh, to model the human speech. And this makes it a bit difficult uh, with regards to um, data and uh, how this data is pertinent according to the context. So just to give you an example, uh, I'm trying to convert text into speech, but people, when they talk in their speech, they do much more than just um, uttering words. So they introduce more parameters in their speech. Uh, and they, depending on their emotional state, uh, to whom they're talking to, where they are at, they, um, can, vary, they can alter many parameters uh, in their speech, like the tone of their voice, the speed they speak in, uh, the volume of their voice, if they insert any pause, if they focus on a particular word. So if I would say, I went to work today, 
uh, or I went to work today, or I went to work today, I might want to give different uh, meanings. I'm still saying the same words. So when uh, machine learning produces this voice uh, and these sentences, uh, we don't really know, depending on the content, which version is more suitable. So um, even if we have the right training data, uh, we must also uh, consider several factors um, on which version of the speech is more uh, pertinent in a specific situation. And these factors are not text only. So it's very hard to produce text to, text -to speech that is natural um, in every scenario if you don't know the exact um, use case. And then um, evaluation is a crucial part for any AI model. So each researcher needs to be able to uh, compare uh, the performance of the model with a previous model to be sure that they improve. Uh, but in text-to-speech, it's very hard to do it precisely for the reason that I mentioned before. So um, there's no one single right way to produce an utterance. Like if I say the same sentence 10 times, it will be in 10 different versions. So um, if you consider another problem like the recognition, like automatic subtitling, you know that for any sentence, you can have, for example, uh, a series of uh, gold data that are the words that you should have transcribed. And then you can compare uh, your generated transcription to the golden uh, data, those words, and count the percentage of your accu accuracy. For text-to-speech, it's very hard to evaluate because we don't, there is no one single version of speech that we can produce, depending on the parameters of tone, speed, and all this. So um, in the field, there is no uh, reliable objective metric at the moment, and we rely on subjective um, evaluations, which makes it even harder to make sure uh, that we make progress. Um, so yeah, data and evaluation are the two main challenges that we face, I face, and I think most researchers uh, face when they train their models. Great, and uh, thank you, Yuria, uh, for your response and answer, and for the overall discussion about this topic. And mm -hmm. we are looking forward to hearing your speech at the conference. And uh, for all of you, uh, please, do not hesitate to join and buy your tickets and have the privilege to watch uh, all the sessions of the conference. Hope to see you there and thank you very much for having me here. <laughs>